Studio. So I've begun the creative process with this this uh, new record. <clears throat> I have a track laid down. It's by no means finished. It's just a skeleton of a production at this point. Basically, I've sat down. I've spent majority of this evening kind of creating individual parts, bass parts, drum parts, uh, the accompaniment. Uh, I dig it. The lead down. Um, it's all there, but it still needs a lot of work. So anybody that knows anything about the production process knows that you're not going to nail this in one night, even in a couple nights or in a couple weeks. Uh, sometimes these things take a while. But nonetheless, there is a piece of music that I do have uh, on disc that's ready to be looked at a little closer in our production process. With that in mind, let's talk about this record for a little bit. What is my vision for this record? It's very important for producers and even artists producing themselves, you know, recording artists, to have a vision of where they're going. So what exactly is my vision with this, this new record I want to push, that I want to produce? Um, the vision I have is it's going to be an electronic, it's going to be an electronic uh, music track. It's going to be electronic-based music. That's, that's what I produce in. That's my genre. Electronic based music. Now, without sounding too cliche, um, I don't necessarily stay within one style of electronic music. I like it all. I like dubstep. I like deep house. I like electro. I like breakbeat. I like big beat. Um, I like all that stuff. And all that stuff comes out my productions. So I hope I don't come off as a cliche when I say that uh, because I'm really not trying. I do have a vision and a definite direction I'm going with this record. All my instruments are going to be electronic based. Um, it's all going to be synthesized. Everything's going to be synthesized from the bass to the leads to the accompaniment to everything. Everything's going to be synthesized in the computer. Um, I could bring in some acoustic elements, but I don't know if that's the direction I want to go in this, in this record. Um, I want this record to be really heavily saturated with the electronic feel. And even more so, I want it to be, I want it to be heavy. I want it to be real heavy. Um, I want it to be where people can dance to it. I do want that. But at the same time, I'm an old school rocker as well. I love old, I love the old school heavy metal. I love old school hard rock and rock and roll. And a lot of those elements kind of seep through when I go to write a piece of music. Um, so I definitely want my my definitely my rhythms to be pretty heavy you know and I want my leads to be soaring kind of like a you know like a lead guitarist would take his guitar solo and just and just rip on it um, that's kind of the vision I have at least the a vision I have for this first track um, as the overall album I have a vision for it as well um, I've been toying with the thought of you know kind of a concept album and just a little bit of a backstory on that, you know, I, I got to watching uh, TV the other night, just kind of chilling out and relaxing, and I uh, came across a episode on the History Channel, kind of a big history buff, and I, I kind of like that kind of stuff on the History Channel, and it's good inspiration too, you know, it, it always inspires me. Um, but I got to watching this stuff on the History Channel about, about our universe, about space and stuff, and I'm kind of a sci-fi geek, you know, I kind of like that kind of stuff. So, uh, and I got to thinking, or they were saying about this planet called Sedina, you know, that's actually a planet, a dwarf planet in our solar system that has this elongated orbit that's kind of like elliptical orbit, you know, and it takes like 11,000 years to complete one cycle of its orbit around our sun, which is crazy. I mean, crazy long. And, uh... You know, I just got to thinking about this planet, and they said this planet got pushed out, you know, probably in the early phases of our universe by another uh, solar system that was probably close to ours, or it probably got drawn off, you know, the gravitational pull of maybe a passing star pulled it away. And I got to thinking about that, and I got to thinking, like, you know, <laughs> that's got a good parallel with life, you know. Sometimes we get pushed off, and sometimes we get pulled away, and 
and we lose ourselves and we get off track, you know, and the thing about this planet was it, it got way off track, you know, and it's just kind of left out there in left field, you know, and it's been dubbed the coldest planet, you know, in our solar system, you know, cold, colder than Pluto, you know, so, and I, and I apologize if I'm sounding nerdy and geeky right now, but I, I kind of like that stuff. Um, so they named it Sedina, you know, which is the intuitive goddess of, you know, the sea, you know, the bottom of the sea, you know, and uh, it really made a lot of parallels with me. So with that said, you know, I, I kind of want to, with this album, yeah, I kind of want to document the history of that star, you know, that dwarf planet, you know, the the birthing phase of that planet, you know, when it was forming, you know, when everything, when the gravi gravity was pulling everything together and forming the planet, and then this, this, this rogue solar system or this rogue star comes and pulls it away, you know, and it, it drifts out into the, you know, middle of nowhere really in space you know and, and now it's on this elongated orbit you know and it's got to work twice as hard to get where it needs to go and that plays so much in life you know and it, to me that's what it spoke to me and maybe i'm kind of a philosopher or a poet i don't know you know maybe you're not following me at all and that's fine too you know but that's kind of the direction i'm seeing with this record is is i want to express that yeah, we get pulled off in life sometimes, and sometimes we get pushed off and we get veered off, but we always need to keep on keep on track, you know, and we always can come back. It may not always be the same, but we can always come back. So that's kind of the initial vision I have for the album. By no means is that the final say-so. Um, this is a creative process, and I'm sure there's going to be tweaks here and there. But I have a definite idea where I want to go with the album. I have a definite course of action, and I want to be uh, intentional when I go to write this. You know, I, I want these songs, which are all mostly going to be electronic based, to still produce emotion. And I still want these songs to kind of speak to people. Now I'm going to have to kind of lead people into things because for the most part, I'm not a singer and there's not going to be any lyrics or any vocals on the mix. So for the most part, I'm going to have to lead the listener into understanding my concept of, okay, here's this track. This is what I'm thinking during this track. This is the concept I have. This is the vision I have for this track. So with that in mind, um, we're going to go and flip to the, to, the, to the screen on the iMac here, and um, we're going to take a look at that track. So stay tuned uh, to the next segment. So we're back, and this is the first track of the new record. Now, let me talk about this for a little bit. This is by no means, and I, and I can't stress that enough, this is by no means the final take of this first track. This is just a creative process. Everybody knows that, well, anybody that knows production knows that you have the creative process, and then you have the edits, and then you go into the mixing phase, and then you go into mastering, which will be the final phase where you stamp the, uh, you stamp it out, and it's ready for distribution. So this is by no means the finished track. So when you listen to this, you, you're not hearing the finished product. This is just the creative phase. With that said, let me talk a little bit about what I've done. I've uh, used Logic's drummer for this track. This is the first track I've used drummer. Uh, since Logic's newest update, 10.1, uh, they've added several new drummers to uh, the drummer patch. And more specifically, they've added this electronic drummer and this hip-hop drummer, which in itself has several other drummers within it. And I've picked this Mangus, Magnus, Magnus guy. Uh, I'm not going to go into really a lot of depth on what's going on here with drummer. Um, maybe a different day or another time we'll talk about that. But for the most part, I'm really happy and really pleased for what I got with the drum track. Um, it's a good sound, and best of all, it's it's got dynamics to it, and that's key to a good drum track is dynamics on any drum track, whether you're tracking with microphones, a 
real drummer or you have a synthetic or a plug-in type drum kit such as Drummer and Logic Pro X. It's important to have dynamics and control and just all these little nuances that make a great drum track. So I'm really impressed with what Logic Pro X, or more specifically what Apple has done with the drummer in this uh, piece of software that they've put out. As far as my bass track goes, I have a sub bass here. This is all in a track stack, in case you don't know what that is. It's a track stack. Um, we're not going to talk about it. It's actually a summing stack. We're not going to talk about really what it is, but more or less, I have a summing stack with three basses in here. And I may add one more bass. I don't know yet. Uh, the sound I have so far is pretty good. Not too bad, but it needs some work still. Uh, pretty much a couple saw basses with a sub bass underneath. Same thing with the accompaniment. I have several. I've created a sum stack as well. And I have several instruments within that sum stack, as you can see. And that is holding down my accompaniment. Uh, again, Depending on where this goes in the creative process, uh, I may add to this stack. I may not. I don't know yet. Uh, for the intro, you can see that I've got several pieces down here for the intro, a couple other uh, pads, and then a couple a couple sound effects, and another pregiated uh, instrument here. Uh, what I've done over here is I've taken several pregiated instruments and I've kind of chopped them all up, up and created this little section here. Then I have my lead section, and then I go back in this little chopped up, appreciated section again. So that's pretty much it. Um, I will say I'm not a sound designer. Um, I do tweak sounds, um, but a lot of times I use the simple presets that, are, uh, that come with a lot of these instruments. And I'll probably get knocked for that by some of these... Uh, some of these producers out here are dance music producers that like to hold true to well we gotta create our own patches and we gotta create our own sounds and we gotta do this and we gotta tweak this sound and I'm all for that and I'm not knocking that at all if you can do that by all means do that but with me I don't have a lot of sound design knowledge um, that doesn't say that I don't take a preset and I tweak it, okay? These are by no means the stock presets. See, there's been some tweaks done to them. But for the most part, that's what these are. So I don't want to mislead anybody or anything like that because um, I'm not a sound designer. Uh, someday maybe I'll, I'll dive into that portion of uh, my creative process and my musical learning later on down the road. But for right now, I want to concentrate more on producing music and not building a hundred patches and then producing music. So with that said, we're going to take a listen to this. Again, I apologize for the, uh, for the fidelity of the audio. Um, I'm kind of new to all this online bit and uploading YouTube videos and whatnot. So I haven't quite figured out how to get the clarity of the sound just right. But nonetheless, it don't sound too bad. So let's take a listen.
so there it is. Um, we're right at five minutes with the you know with the tail of the reverb, so it's not bad. It's got a good length to it. Um, just to clarify what I said earlier, you know about the phases of production. Actually, it's creative phase, recording phase, mixing phase, and then uh, I'm sorry, uh, creative phase, recording phase, editing phase, mixing phase, and then mastering phase. So any of those purists out there, uh, don't don't uh, don't hit me up too bad. But nonetheless, there's the track. Uh, let's talk about it for a moment. There's a little section here that I'm not liking. Um, it kind of drifts off, and there needs to be some something needs to be in there, like a cymbal hit or something, to kind of give a give the listener, you know, uh, time to get ready to go into the next section. So there's something in there that needs to happen. I'm not too satisfied with this down here. It gets kind of repetitive from this section here, I think. So we'll have to do some tweaking here as well. And right here, there's got to be some kind of a cymbal hit as well. Because as of now, the drums just kind of stop. You know, and it, it's kind of very abrupt and very in your face. And it's it doesn't sound very good. But for the most part, for a few hours of production and just laying down individual instruments and creating the individual parts, I'm I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to touch base with this again until Friday. I work the next couple of days. So Friday, we'll get back to it, and we'll tweak this a little bit more, and we'll go from there. And hopefully we can get the creative phase and the recording phase down and move on to mixing sometime within the next week, week and a half. So that's kind of it, and we're going to sign off from this screen, and I will do a closing, and we'll catch you there. So we just got to be listening to the track, and as you, as I pointed out on the screen, there's, screen, there still needs to be some tweaks and, and some modifications made to the track. For the most part, what I was thinking when I was writing this track was in the beginning, you hear that big boom, you know, and that big explosion. Well, to me, that was kind of my way of putting into music, you know, the big bang, you know, everything starts, you know, the whole system starts. You know, and, and then you got this soft kind of ease into the drums, you know, with the pads and whatnot. And that's kind of my concept of Sedina, this dwarf planet, like I was talking about, forming. You know, that's kind of the way I interpreted it when I could hear it in my head. Now, by no means is it finished, and I'm sure there's going to be tweaks, and I'm going to come back to it and say, oh, well, this may sound a little better, or the listener may understand this a little bit better, or maybe I can convey this emotion a little bit better by doing this. But for the most part, that's what I was thinking when I was writing this track was that little rogue planet that has been pulled off and uh, pushed out of the way by, you know, for whatever means. Um, and as it goes into the track, you know, there's a building, you know, there's a building. And to me, that's when the planet starts forming. You know, the gravity starts bringing all these rocks and the dust and all these molecules and all these uh, elements together and starts forming this planet, you know, and then the planet's kind of formed, you know, and now it's it's really kind of taken off and it's heating up and everything's molding together and it goes into the big that big section in the middle, you know, with the with the cut up appreciated instruments. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, for the most part, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm not a hundred percent I'm not a hundred percent on it by any means. And it's gonna take some more work. I mean it's just it just does. These these things take work. Uh, but for the most part I think I've I think I got a good track to begin conveying that emotion, um, that emotion of beginnings, that emotion of yeah, this is how it starts, and this is the this is the emotion I'm trying to convey, you know, of of a nostalgic type feeling of a beginning of of this is this is how it begins, this is how this whole life begins, you know, with an explosion and everything comes together, and then, you know, for a while it's just utter chaos, you know. So that's kind of what I was thinking with the track. Um, if you have any ideas or uh, any comments or concerns, maybe you absolutely hate the track and you hate my concept and you absolutely think I'm nuts, that's fine too. Uh, give me a big thumbs up on the video anyways and, and leave a comment. Say I'm friggin' nuts. That's fine. I, I'm all good with that. Uh, but if you did like it, you know, and, and, and it touched you some way or my thoughts touched you or... Uh, Somewhere along the way, you found that wow, that was pretty creative of this guy. Uh, you know, give me a thumbs up as well on the on the on the blog. 
and keep up with me because we're not done by any means. Um, like I said, I'm probably not going to be able to get back in the studio till about Friday. i got to go to work the next few days, so um, it really cuts into my time behind the studio, you know, behind the behind the board and, you know, with Logic and everything. And, and that's and just a quick shout out to Apple and Logic. Uh, that's what that's what I produce out of right now. Uh, it's Logic Pro X. Um, it's a great platform. Um, here lately with Yosemite coming out, it's been kind of buggy. Um, I've been kind of disappointed that, but with this new two or ten point one update, it's not been so bad. Uh, I'm really impressed with that new drummer. I, I can see myself using that quite a bit. So um, but stay tuned, and we got a lot more. So. Um, Give me a big thumbs up, hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button, and I am out of here. Keep pressing play. We'll see you next time. This is it, no, no, no.